Hello, my name is Guthrie. I am here to talk about behavioral economics, and today's topic is sunk costs. Now, sunk costs are something that people have a pretty innate understanding of. It's something that you use in the normal lexicon, and on, unlike our last topic, uh, which was <laughs> heuristics, it's pretty simple, right? It's a cost that is sunk. That is, there's nothing you can do. You've already spent it. So um, let's do a quick little mind journey. Think of a, uh, a paper clip on a beach. Take a deep breath. All right. So here's, here, here's, here it is. It's a perfect example of, of how you feel about sunk costs. You've just been um, at work at a really, really long shift. Like, you know, you got to work at 7 and you got off work at 6 p.m. Like, it's a really long, difficult shift. Uh, after work, you go outside and thank God you're hungry, you're tired, it's cloudy, you're angry. There is your favorite Mexican food truck and they sell one of your favorite items, a torta, which is a Mexican sandwich. Um, you like to get the ham one with tons of delicious green chili sauce, which is the good sauce. So un unfortunately it is six o'clock and there's a long line, uh, for this, for this beautiful food truck to get your hands on a Mexican sandwich and the sandwich itself is eight dollars and you think to yourself boy should I just get one quick and then I can eat it and go home happy or you know should I trudge home and have you know ramen noodles or whatever I have at home well you decide I'm gonna I'm gonna stand in line I'm gonna wait I'm gonna pay finally you wait you pay your eight dollars you get your hands on the perfect ham sandwich it's got avocado and green uh, chili salsa you're so happy uh, as you walk away from the truck, there's a there's a there's a bump on the ground. You trip on the bump. Oh, the sandwich flies in the air and into a dirty puddle. It's gone. That's it. And you want to just break down and cry right there. So that sucks. That sucks. And at this point, you now are faced with two decisions, right? You can either stand in line again and pay another eight dollars and get a sandwich. Or you can dejectedly put your head down and just go home. Now, I bet you a lot of a lot of a lot of you will actually, in that situation, put your head down, just go home, accept defeat. Um, but if you were a computer program, right? If you're that AI computer uh, program, this the actual calculation has not changed. The line is still the same. You're just as hungry as you were. Uh, you just got off work in basically the same manner, and the sandwich is still $8. So there's no reason not to go buy another sandwich. Um, but that's not how we humans feel, and of course this is all about feeling. So to you it feels like now I have to stand in line twice and pay $16 for a sandwich, and that's something I'm not willing to do. So I'm just going to leave. Uh, so that's that's sunk cost. Now, there have been a ton of research studies all about sunk costs. It's a very popular topic for a lot of different reasons. Um, and I'm going to stick with uh, a, a goodie, but an oldie, but a goodie, uh, which is, and I'm, I want to quote some stuff here, uh, a paper by Arcs and Bloomer um, from 1985, The Psychology of Sunk Cost. So here they asked a series of questions, and here's um, a slightly modified uh, version of the first experiment. All right. So and I, I'm, I'm quoting here, quote, you have spent $100 on a, uh, for a weekend ski trip to Michigan. Several weeks later, you buy a $50 ticket for a weekend ski trip to Wisconsin. So again, $100 uh, for a ticket for a weekend ski trip to Michigan. And then a couple weeks later, you buy that $50 ticket for the ski trip to Wisconsin. You think that you'll enjoy the Wisconsin ski trip more than the Michigan trip. Suddenly, oh no, you just realized you've booked the Wisconsin's trip on the same weekend as the Michigan trip, and it's too late to sell either ticket, and you can't return either one. You have to use one, and you can't use the other. Which ski trip do you go on? The $100 ski trip to Michigan or the $50 ski trip to Wisconsin? Now, the answer should always be Wisconsin. You said earlier you think you'll enjoy the Wisconsin ski trip more than the Michigan trip. Okay, so assuming humans are rational creatures that always to do take the decision that's in their best interest, you always go on the Wisconsin ski trip because you think you'll enjoy it more. More enjoyment is better than less enjoyment. Go on the Wisconsin one. Of course, 
That's not what people do. In fact, only 54% of respondents uh, picked, sorry, 54% of respondents picked the Michigan trip and only 46% picked Wisconsin, even though the Wisconsin trip would be the better trip. Um, people who pick Michigan say because they don't want to waste money. But again, this is the whole point of the sunk cost, uh, weird human quirk or cognitive bias. Uh, the money is already spent. The money is gone. You're not wasting money. You wasted it the second that you bought two trips on the same weekend and then got in and it was too late to return it or sell it. So that's, you know, the, the, the thought of wasting money, you're wasting more. That's ir completely irrelevant. But that's not how people think and that's not how people feel. Um, another interesting experiment that they did uh, was at um, an Ohio University theater. And basically, if, if you went to go, you, you call them up, you say, hey, I want season tickets. They randomly put you into three conditions. So one t uh, got the normal price, one got a $2 discount, and the third was a, was a $7 discount. And what they found was that people who um, were given the no uh, discount group uh, actually ended up using more season tickets. They, they had a higher level of attendance. If you got a really good deal, people actually were less likely to show up. So those are, those are two, you know, two potential reasons why the sunk cost uh, fallacy happens or why it exists. So uh, people might think that the Michigan trip is better because it's worth more money. And there's actually a lot of, of evidence to support this idea that if you buy something expensive, you'll like it more, not because it's actually better, you know, uh, but it's because it's more expensive. They do this with wine all the time, where you have two uh, cheap bottles of wine that are like dirt cheap $6. And they say, one of these is a dirt cheap bought six dollar bottle of the wine the other one is you know is like a like an uh uh you know the uh, oak vineyards uh select uh blah 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 with all these complex flavors and interesting whatevers and i want you to you know like which one do you prefer and the people like oh you know this expensive bottle of wine i'm in i'm smelling a i'm tasting acorns and it has a full robust flavor and uh, is that like hints of uh, notes of honey and this this kind of stuff? And it's all just like cheap six dollar bottles of wine, right? So, <laughs> so it could be that people feel like the Michigan trip is better because it was worth more, even though the Wisconsin trip is better because it's less. It, it people get confused. Um, the other, you know, reason either way, right? Whether it's sunk cost or whether you know you think the trip, you know, you're worried about missing out on a potentially more expensive trip. Um, the sunk cost uh, cognitive bias happens all the time to us in a lot of different places, and it's really important to think about. So here are some uh, fun, fun ways to, to use it. Uh, if, if you want to um, stop customers from switching services, uh, break their payment into smaller like just a little bit at a time, right? So if you can get them that to, to get in that first little bit for a dollar, and then it's two dollars, and it's five dollars, um, the customer feels that like, for example, if you're doing training, oh, I don't want to stop, I don't want to switch to a different service because you know I've already started, I've already paid a couple dollars, I've already registered, you know, and that's so if you can get in the system, it's really easy then for people to be afraid to switch because they feel that they have. Are losing something even though they, that is a sunk cost. They've already paid that and whether they switch or not in the future has no relevance. Um, another example uh, is that let's say you go to a, a car dealership and um, there are two problems with your car but you don't know there are two problems with your car. You just go in for the first one. Both problems will cost $800 to fix and both problems are you have the same likelihood of fixing either. So you go to the dealership and you you think this is the problem. The dealer comes back and is like, oh, you got you got a problem here. It's eight hundred bucks. Uh, you're gonna have to fix it. And you're like, ah, oh, that kind of sucks, but I should fix it. And you pay this, the eight hundred dollars, right? Um, but if instead you went out and then the next week they found out, oh. Here's another problem, and it's another eight hundred dollars. You're gonna feel really bad, like ah, I just sunk. You know, I don't want to pay that extra eight hundred. I just paid that, even though that first eight hundred for a separate, unrelated problem has no bearing on your decision for the next eight hundred. And yet we feel, oh, we just put money into the car. We th we shouldn't have to fix this. You know, this we've already. S but that is a sunk cost. So it's hard to separate yourself from the sunk cost thing. And finally, I'll just add a little personal note. You know, when it comes to relationships, this happens a lot too. Uh, sometimes you have feelings and 
you know, next you have to d- make a decision on what you want to do with those feelings, whether it's fighting with a coworker or, you know, you're having an argument with a spouse. And sometimes, you know, or God forbid, a breakup, you know, breaking up is hard to do as the song says. So if you could just um, realize that, hey, I've already invested this, you know, this is, it's a sunk cost. It's gone. It's under, it's, you know, under the bridge on the water downstream, um, you know, I'm, I need to focus on making a decision about the here and now about what moving forward, what should we do? Uh, people can, so, uh, can, can make a better decision, but that is very difficult to do. So I encourage everyone to think critically and to uh, be aware of when you are, uh, falling into the sunk cost fallacy. Um, there's a lot more research on sunk costs, for example, uh, especially, you know, if investments, I mean, right, you've already, the stock is down and, and you don't want to, you know, you've already lost money here. Uh, and so you don't want to lose more money, but you know, blah, 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 blah. Again, you have to draw that line. Okay, that stuff's gone. I need to move on from where I'm currently positioned. But uh, hopefully you can use sunk costs in your own work and at least be aware of when you and your customers might be running into uh, such things. So with that, I'm going to thank you so much for listening and we'll get on to the next video in just a second. Thanks.